Thank you. Um, okay, uh, so thanks everyone in the room. Thanks Pedro and Petro, and hopefully Thomas might be able to join at some point as well for joining online. Um, so this workshop is about ILL, interlibrary loans in Koha, and um, there's not a, a massively set agenda, but there are a few things we wanted to try to cover. Um, and um, just to give you the UK context um, and why we're interested in uh, where ILL is going in Koha, um, we have a big, uh, a number of big contracts with uh, National Health Service England, as uh, so the uh, all the hospital libraries in England basically, and we have six consortial systems at the moment, with two more that we might uh, have moving to Koha in the future, um, and as well as using ILL for uh, interlending uh, from a number of uh, external inverted commas providers. Um, so Reprints Desk is one of them. Uh, Libkey via a tool called InkDocs is another. Um, they're also very interested in interlending between COAs, so between the consortial systems across the country. So they would be very interested in that whole, and they have specified and will invest in some work on the supply side interlending piece uh, that uh, Lizette showed us was in the InReach plugin earlier this week. Um, so the concept of moving that into the core is very much something we're interested in. Um, but also part of their investment has been in trying to um, reduce the workflow for the librarians around ILL. And but I, uh, the, the, the way of doing that, I mean, one of the one of the core things that we have felt is not working well with ILL, if you, particularly if you have multiple sources, is that either the staff member or the uh, end user, the first thing they get asked to do is to choose a back end. And it's kind of like, what the heck is a back end? Uh, I mean, I can give you not such a polite answer for that. <laughs> but, but um, you know, that, that wasn't great workflow for us or UI for us. Um, and uh, it's not that relevant to people who just have one source, you know, they just start an ILL and they don't, but for those who have multiple, then it's, it's an issue. Um, and obviously the free form is a back end at the moment as well. So that's also a bit confusing. Um, and then there's this whole idea of, if you have multiple sources, what gets priority and how do you know which is to be prioritized? Uh, is it cost? Is it just an internal policy around priority? And can we facilitate somehow easing that workflow? So what Pedro has been working on is a couple of things. Um, one is um, moving the free form into core so that it's a uh, a standard form effectively, but Pedro will explain much more about that. We spoke about that, and he'll go to that. Um, the second thing is this concept of automation around uh, plugins, and with that, moving backends to plugins. So, again, Pedro will talk better on this than I can. Uh, and within the automation, the sort of sense and question about uh, prioritization and what gets, you know, what's the first choice and so on. So, is that enough of an intro, Pedro? I think that's plenty. Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that means stop talking, Andrew. No, no, that means that was great. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> also, from Finland point of view perspective, uh, to append uh, why Finland interested in ILL as well, because Finnish central repository, it works on Koha. And if we make ELL there, then uh, competitors like uh, other uh, software, not Koha, will be able to interchange with them. So this will stick Koha in core of Finnish uh, warehouse uh, yes. system. And, and, and with that is the idea that we want to align with the ISO standard, the international ISO That's standard of one, 18626, because other library systems non-Koha 
use already that standard to enable their ILL, lending, borrowing, ILL. So um, that's also part of the work that, that um, Andre is referring to as well, aligning everything around ILL with 1866 and specifically the supply side piece. Well, the chat is all about that as well, because um, in Australia, presenting system for us is massive. Um, health library based ILL system called Grassman, and we've been doing more work to integrate with that ISO, the standard in the uh, Grassman side. That's what probably some things can be shared there. Great. So that's David Cook, Pedro from uh, Australia Pro Sentient Systems, Australia, who's just saying they've already been some work around aligning with the 18626 standard. Oh, no, but the official ILL just doesn't go on. Yeah. So. So outside of official ILL module in Koha. Uh, I'm just repeating because sometimes you can't always be heard. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And now, Okay. Okay. Yes. So that's a consideration from, from Sonia of Koala in France saying that uh, at the moment the current back end has is hard coded uh, around Mark and isn't compatible at the moment with Unimark, which is what they use as the cataloging standard in France and Italy and anywhere else. Portugal. France and Italy. So any when we're working on the standard form, we need to bear in mind Unimark potentially. Right. Great. Fire away, Pedro. Can you, uh, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Right. I was just saying Portugal also uses Unimark as well um the the free form uh from my understanding it does not consider mark or unimark so it's it sits it sits parallel to the whole bibliographic framework and 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 data stuff right um so unless unless you want to create a biblio from a uh, an ill request for a book uh which we can take a look at to, to ensure that unimark is compatible that should be fine right so we should be good on that front just to answer Sonia's question specifically. Should uh, should we start, Andrew? You start. Uh, we'll take up the detail of that yeah. with Sonia. I'm right. notes. Uh, Martin is taking notes, so we'll follow up on any actions. All right. So just to, to start things off with the pushing the free form into, in, into core, right? Um, I'm just going to briefly go over the setup I have here. So this is current main branch with a couple of bugs applied to it and a plugin installed. So the bugs I have here are, are the ones listed on Mattermost for the ILL work group. So there's six bugs here, but they're basically just three features. <clears throat> number one is adding freeform into, into core. Uh, number two is allow for an automatic backend selection, which Andrew uh, went over about. And number three is, is for allowing uh, unauthenticated ILL requests through through the OPEC. So we're just going to briefly go through uh, these three uh, things. So number one is just the ILL uh, standard. Um, so I pushed, I pushed Freeform into core and I uh, renamed it into standard. This was merely my own decision. Um, it's open for discussion uh, in QA. Uh, for me, standard make made more sense as a standard ILL request. Freeform sounds like a brand, but again, open for discussion. Uh, it's basically just freeform. So if you click on it, uh, excuse the UI for a second, because this is uh, due to the bootstrap upgrade uh, that happened recently. So the ILL UI looks slightly different, um, but everything else is just the same, right? So you just create an ILL request uh, and then it's done. Uh, the only difference is instead of freeform, you just have, uh, it's called standard, right? It's literally the same thing. Everyone who knows freeform, it's literally the same thing. The only difference is you don't have to manage server files through the command line manually uh, for installing or upgrading the backend, which 
uh, for me personally, I think it's a it's a big improvement. Um, and uh, and also any new Koha that enables the ILL module will be able to use the ILL module out of the box instead of having to 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 install a backend um, by copying the files into the server manually, etc. Which is which has been historically a big blocker for people testing bugs and overall just having people comfortable with with how ILL works. Uh, my understanding of it is ILL is a big um, is a big uh, boogeyman, and everyone is 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 scared of it. So we 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 want to break those barriers. Um, so yeah, so this is it for freeform as standard requests. Again, it's the same thing as freeform. Uh, nothing's different uh, in terms of functionality. The <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about has to do with the automatic backend selection. So as you can see, I have two backends here on my on my installation, and the first thing I'm asked to to pick is which backend I want to place the ILL request in. Uh, this plugin backend here is just a dummy test plugin that I made. Uh, but in some of our customers, we have up to four uh, four options. We we may have the British Library, Rapid ILL, Reprints Desk, Freeform. So it it, get, it becomes confusing really fast for uh, for users and and patrons. Uh, for staff members and patrons. So we really want to flip that around and, and have the backend selection be automatic. So we now have this new system preference here, uh, which, which is called auto ILL backend priority. Um, so as you can see, this is a drag, a drag and drop UI thing. Uh, so if you have like say four backends installed, you can uh, reorder them uh, and pick uh, their, uh, their priority on the automatic uh, selection step. So if I just enable this one and say, uh, this is now a backend that's set up for automatic selection. Um, if I now go back to my ILL requests, you will see this button here, new ILL request. Now it just says new auto ILL request. Again, this is up for discussion. I just changed this in the UI for now to make it obvious that the automatic thing is enabled. So when you now click here, uh, you see the standard form, regardless of how many backends you have installed, you will always see the same form uh, for these fields with these types, etc. Uh, the difference now is <clears throat> there's now a new stage. Uh, when you click create requests, it doesn't create it uh, immediately. Uh, now has this step where it's checking for availability for the backends you have installed. So again, picture you have four backends here. What this step is doing is for each of the backends, it's asking for availability given the metadata that we just input on the previous form. Uh, so if you have ISBN, DOI, PubMed ID, however, you know, title, author, whatever, uh, the backend is is just querying, you know, is this available here or not? This test backend uh, just has a fifty percent chance of being available or not, just for demo purposes. Uh, so I can try and refresh this and you can see if, uh, yeah, as you can see, so now it's not available. It's not actually doing anything and any third party request. This is just a demo, uh, plugin, but again, uh, this step allows, so it will suggest you which backend is the most appropriate to place this specific request in. Um, but you, you can also manually, uh, change it here on this step. Um, so. When you click on it, you're done. On the OPAC, which is a bit more interesting because we really want to take this choice away from the patrons, right? Uh, and we don't want to move the choice to the end and make them cho choose anyways. That uh, that wouldn't make any sense because we wouldn't be fixing the problem. Um, so what we're doing here on the OPAC instead is, again, you um, you, uh, you you do the form. You will see this design here is a bit different. It's one of the uh, intermediate bugs. As you can see this step here, placing your request uh, and the patron does not have the option to pick a different one. It will always go into the most appropriate one. Um, if it happens to be needed to, uh, to change it, then the staff member can do it um, in the staff UI, right? But here in the OPEC, um, the patron will never have to pick the backend. The patron just says, this is what I want, you know, this is the the article or the uh, uh, DOI or whatever. Uh, this is what I want. I don't want to know if this is coming from uh, InReach or uh, Reprints Desk or whatever, right? 
So that's the big bonus, uh, the big benefits here um, in terms of the OPEG. <clears throat> I think this covers the automatic side of things here. So as you can see, this is making use of the fact that Freeform is now core Koha uh, and sits uh, beneath this functionality. So it, it 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 will always fall back into standard in case all the backends come back as unavailable, right? Let's say that you have, again, four backends and none of them are able to provide the document that you're uh, requesting. It will always fall back to a standard request and then staff members can decide on what they do with that. Uh, if they contact the patron or uh, ask for a partner library or, or whatever else, right? This covers it for the automatic um, step here. The last one I wanna just briefly mention has to do with the ability to place a request being uh, unauthenticated. And the reason, uh, or the first reason we need this uh, for PTFS Europe is we, we want to be able to 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 provide a link, an, an open URL from a different platform into Koha, where users are able to place an LL request in Koha, but coming from a different platform. So I have an open URL here prepared, and I'm just going to open a incognito where I'm not authenticated, right? And as you can see, um, I am able to place an LL request. The only reason I'm able to do that is because of a new system preference with which is unauthenticated request you know we can allow or not so if i disallow this and refresh this again you will see you know i'm unable to place a request because i'm not allowed to place an authenticated one uh, but it just works the same thing as a regular request and the neat thing you're going to see here is uh, these features work together optionally right they're not Hides to each other, but optionally they work together. So um, if I'm here to place an, an unauthenticated IDL request, as you can see, I'm not logged in. Uh, I'll just put my name, email address, uh, pick the library. Uh, I, I already have metadata here. It's coming from the open URL from a third party platform, right? That's the use case uh, we have originally. So if we click create now, you will see the automatic backend selection is, is happening. Even though it's a different uh, feature, uh, it's also happening here. And again, the unauthenticated request has been placed. And if we now refresh on the staff UI, you will see this request 11 is st status unauthenticated. And if we manage this, yeah, you'll see there's a staff note here uh, of the uh, details of the person. Uh, which may or may not exist in Koha, right? Uh, so that's just the ability to allow for um, OPEC users to place an idle request without forcing them to log in. Um, so yeah. I'll just explain the context of that. Major. So the context of that is that many of the health library users um, are predominantly browsing and using EDS. Um, and they may have logged in, they may or may not have logged into EDS. Um, but we're at the moment unable to use an SSO authentication to pass through to COA from the particular SSO provider. And it's just too complicated for the NHS and for us at the moment. We're working on it. Um, but um, we're, they, they have a, a sort of an, an ILL button, you know, in, in the, their EDS, their EDSs. There are 180 EDSs for the NHS in England, different instances. Um, and um, it's the ability to handle those um, uh, what they call URL thingies. Open URL, yeah. Open yeah. URLs that get passed or they get generated when somebody presses those buttons and be able to handle it irrespective of whether we know who they are at that time. Thank you. Well, Jess, from the legal have a question. Um, is there a mechanism that prevents robots from placing requests? Did you hear the question? I did not, sorry. Apologies. So Matthias from Biblibo asking if there's a mechanism or if we've envisaged a mechanism for uh, preventing robots from creating unauthenticated requests. Uh, I mean, it's it, it works the same as any openly accessible form, right? So I, I believe the answer to that is is no. 
Uh, but on the confirmation screen, um, security was taken into account where uh, this is just a post form where others, other people can't see the request that you created, right? Once you leave that page, uh, it's gone forever. Uh, so we, we, we tackle security on that front. But I mean, again, I think it's probably as simple as, as putting a honeypot or something, right? As we have in other, in other forms, right? Okay, thank you for the yes. Th thank you, Matias. It's good to see you. <laughs> Is that as much as you wanted to show, Pedro? Um, that's as much as I have. So, yeah, cool. Uh, so, are there any questions for Pedro about what he's shown? Um, observations, questions, thoughts. So. I just want to add for this for this unauthenticated option, we really wanted to to tackle this in a way that can possibly also be useful for other people, right? For other kohas, uh, any other koha that that may have this requirement, where uh, they may want to have the option to allow patrons to place an LL request without having them to log in. Uh, you know, they can also use that, right? We uh, we tried as much as we can to to have an abstract approach to these problems, uh, so that you know, we we bring value to uh, to the overall overall um, project. Uh, so that's yeah, that's what we try to do here. So if there's no questions, uh, I have a question, which is Sonia. Sonia has a question. Hang on, Sonia has a question. Go ahead. So this this question relates to the tables, both on the staff side and on the OPAC, um, the ILL request table, and having the ability to manage the columns basically um, on both um, uh, both sides, OPAC and staff side. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, in in terms of manage, uh, we I mean we can already uh, hide stuff here, right? Uh, that's something uh, we can do at the moment. Uh, no, no, if we if we click on con on configure, right? If we do it here, so let's say I want to hide pages here, year, volume, issue, uh, author. But here I don't know if it's for OPAC or staff. The OPAC does not. The OPAC does not have that. No, no, no. The OPAC is not a data table. No, it's just the staff UI that has it. So it would be great if we could have that functionality for the OPAC table as well, if it was possible. Yeah. Marie Luz from En Libro is also asking if it would be something to consider to shorten the form in the OPAC. So something similar to the OPAC uh, purchase suggestions, mandatory fields, preference. I, I definitely, I 100% agree with that. I think I think these are things that could come up as follow-ups once once the form is in core, right? So 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 the first idea was to just push free form as is into core to keep it as simple as possible. But you know, once that that's there, we can build on top of it, right? So one of Pedro's big asks today is crack on test and QA it, please. <laughs> is that right, Pedro? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that was going to be my question. Yeah, if uh, anyone's available, uh, the task plans are all in in all the bugs. Uh, they're a bit extensive. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Is there a sandbox that people can use to test it on? Can we get it on for a sandbox? So, so at the moment, if you if you apply the <laughs> the last the last bug on the tree, all all six bugs apply, and you you can install the plugin. Uh, it's it's a plugin that's on our PTFS Europe GitHub. So you don't need to access the server. Anyone can do these test plans, right? Any anyone can do that, uh, because Freeform is in core and it's a plugin. You can Take the KPZ and install it yourself. Anyone can do it. I don't so. think GitHub added that strong enough. That's one of the massive advantages of all, all the work that's done is that these are now plugins. So it's just click and install. Whereas before you had to go on, to, you had to have server knowledge and to go on and to do quite a lot of messing around to get to add and install. Now it's just one click, go. <laughs> Pedro, you haven't shown, I'm not sure whether this because it's disappeared or because it's not relevant to this. You had a plugin that was like an ILL config plugin at one point. Is that still in, in existence? I have it. I have it. Yeah, it's uh, it's the ILL actions one. Yeah. Yeah. And is it relevant? Um, sure. Uh, it doesn't require QA, right? Because it's our own plugin. So uh, it just it just has a bit of extra functionality to to help out with um, just adds just adds some new features basically to to, uh, to ILL that works around Koa community QA, basically. Hey, sorry I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. I mean, ideally some of those, if they make sense, they would they will end up in core, right? Uh, but for now they live in that plugin. If you if you were paying attention to Martin's presentation on the plugin store, the ILL actions one was one of those. So there it is. We've had a few people have nodded their heads sagely and said, I'll get right on and test that, Pedro. <laughs> it's not it's not ready yet, but it, I think it's close. No, no. Your 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 bug. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Perfect. What, what was the last bug in the yeah, what was the number of the bug, Pedro? Could you pop it in the Coacon Matinos chat, please? Yes, yes. Any instructions? So in Matinos, we have a channel for ILL, um, and that's where we've been having some correspondence around and, and with Thomas. Um, and Lizette around this supply side um, concept. Um, so um, I guess that's the place to hang out if you're interested in helping out with that work. Um, we've got a bit more work to do just to sort of work on tightening up the specification around that. Um, but um, it, it's it's really important that we kind of get that worked on in the next six months or so, I think. Um, that's the sort of delivery horizon for our NHS customer in this context. Um, and I know that Finland has been pressing for a while for this and is very keen to see it move forward. So it'd be great to have some other helpers on that side of things. And Michaela is waving furiously with enthusiasm. <laughs> so it's also something we can potentially pick up again at the DAC or Hackfest um, if there's some concrete work to have been looked at by then or at least discuss further the specification, tighten that up, whatever. Pedro, did you have any more asks of the group? As in, please test this now, that sort of ask. Uh uh not no specifically um i think just these six uh ill bugs you know that have been sitting for a while understandably because they're you know they're new features so uh but yeah nothing else for now i think so does anyone have any other thoughts about um what they would like to see in ill um other than what we've already discussed 
And let's leave the supply side of, uh, to one side for now. And a monomax selection looks pretty cool. Automatic yeah. selection does look cool, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it's we're just talking about whether internationally there are other other countries that have multiple backend slash plugins in the future. Um, but David is is definitely very ears pricked up to the auto ILL and just to the working on ILL generally because Australia is having some major overhaul on in the ILL area coming up. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely uh, joint work to be done. So, Katrin, you were mentioning earlier today that there was the cases of handling if you don't want to use the forms in Koha uh, for originating the requests and how what, how that might work. Is that did I understand that correctly? So, so currently we don't um, allow a new request to be added from within Koha because we have a specialized software for that um, with a very good search facilities and so ideally we don't want to use it to put in geographic information but to look for the record that request that but does it end up as an ILL request in Koha? So it's how does it get from currently how does it get from your sort of search and find system into Koha? You can either either use the uh, it could be from the ILL server that we use this uh, software, or they can use a Wuhan based um, search interface, place their request there, and it gets sent to the central LL server, and that communicates with Koha to process the request. And how does it communicate with Koha? Um, the protocol is SMMP, so it's a proprietary. Yeah, we use a backend that we developed for months. So will this be affect? Will that be affected? Do you think by this change? Right. That that prequel, the first thing it does is a search. It doesn't create a request. It it's just a search form. That's all it is. If it doesn't get any results. Then it creates a request that a librarian can go do more work to find a result. But where does it, it search? search for. In the core catalog or where does it search? All the backends. All any backend you have installed. And if your backend search. didn't implement availability. So if your if your backend does not have availability uh, on this, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, keep going. So if your backend does not have availability, it shows up here as red. With, with the message saying this backend is not available for, or is not enabled to provide automatically and you can't you can't select it. But as I see the automatic um, prioritizing is optional. So if you wanted, you could still have- This is optional. Yeah, yeah. If if you don't, so if I, if, if I take this off, right, there's no, uh, there's nothing selected for priority, then the ILL request is just the same as, as we know before, right? It just works the same thing. It just works the same way. So no effect, no worries. Right. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And then there is the there is the question I was discussing earlier. Is there the ability to only it to be to discreetly select whether you do or don't want this to be applied in the OPAC as well as the staff side? Right. At the moment, it's it's a single switch for both, but we can we can work on that. Okay. Cool. Maybe the follow up, right? Okay. <laughs> Get this in. 
<laughs> right. They can do a, a jQuery um, workaround now. Right, so there's no more presentation to be done. Stunned silence in the room means, Pedro, <laughs> that you're just, you've just bowled us over. So everyone's just actually heads down testing your, your bugs right now. I'm very, I'm very used to the stunned silence or the ILAD presentation, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't want to prolong anything painfully um but it would be great as we say if we if anyone who's keen and available can use a little bit of time today um to have a little look and help pedro with that the supply side piece i think uh, is there anything andre that you want to talk about in terms uh, of that on the return home uh, uh of course, uh, I will keep myself go more deeply on this, but we decided we were busy with previous release, so it was slightly delayed, but we decided to assign Petro for Pedro for almost full-time assistance on this topic as developer. And our warehouse library uh, has already a copy like testing server instance. Uh, so they also, interested to participate and we have one uh, uh, experienced librarian technology guy with us so yeah we will go in on full possible so just to say that if we somehow missing from some stream so i'm asking pedro uh, push on us uh, sometimes i'm not covering those things so we need to contact directly with pedro or with other with ari or other guys in our team Okay, and Petro and Ari, we, we know already. Pedro yeah, so, already so it's exactly those yeah. two guys whom you know. Yes. And Ari is very uh, accurate and for following uh, uh, experts. So if to pick up Ari into the streams, he will take uh, a business goal and split up in more details for us without you uh, for development. Great. Okay, so um, we have Thomas. Anyone who's interested on, and then there's a, a document here that relates. Hello, Thomas. Lovely to see you. Oh, that's my arm. There we go. I'm going to wave in the right direction. Um, uh, Pedro's put up a document relating to the supply side requirements in, in Finland. Uh, so there's work already in play there and done uh, in terms of specification. We need to sort of make that bit a bit more universal and uh, bring in any other thoughts around supply side contexts um, and then crack on with some work, hopefully. This especially for this specification, since Ari is well uh, fee experienced to take in. So please, yeah. yeah. Thomas, you've joined us uh, just as we were talking uh, about going away and all of us testing Pedro's bugs to destruction. Um, but we've gone over Pedro's um, preform into standard form plus auto ILL um, development and uh, exposing auto ILL in, in the OPAC as well. And then taking unauthenticated ILL requests as well, which, is, which are the requirements that have come out for the UK. Um, and then we've just been discussing that uh, we need to move forward on the supply side stuff uh, and take on board the context of inReach and your work with Lizette um, and the thinking and work that you've already done in that plugin that Lizette was demonstrating earlier this week uh, as we start to try and get that supply side piece into core somehow and obviously also bearing in mind the ISO 18626 standard. So that's that's a kind of three sentence summary of what we've discussed thus far. That's great. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I miss the, the the first part of it. Um, Petra, do you think uh, we should uh, talk about the supply side on top of your work? Does it 
uh, introduce any design changes that could move us to that direction. Other than the backends being now plugins, not really. I think okay. I think what we have here is is pretty much self contained, um, in 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 what it does. So, I don't think there's any overlap, um, you know, on these particular pieces, um, that may block or benefit the the supplying side, at least not as they are designed currently, right? Did you did you move towards uh, the backend class we talked at some point? Uh, first steps, yes, we have some first steps in that direction. Excellent. Not not the full extent of it, uh, because that would be a multiple year <laughs> job. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know if it's multiple year, but yeah, uh, baby steps. So, so this, uh, if if I can just talk about about this document here real quick, uh, we started this discussion, uh, me, Tomas, Andrew, uh, on Mattermost a couple months ago, where we wanted to on this on this channel, ILL work group, where we wanted to. So this was July, right? Uh, we wanted to really start the discussion around this topic and sort of collect uh, all the existing work around it. Uh, that spec is one is one of that work. Uh, there is this repository here on GitHub. Uh, I believe uh, it relates uh, with the Finna guys as well, um, or the Finnish guys. Um, so, you know, we sort of, I think we need to do some sort of work in understanding what exists and what can we use or if we use at all, right? I think that's, that's a good starting point uh, in my opinion. Um, I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I I've been reading that code a few weeks ago, um, and I and I guess uh, that code and the Enrich one should give us some hints on what needs to be implemented in the core. Uh, what are the needs we have? Um, yeah, how I agree. do we rewrite it all? I Is agree. Core core things. Because InReach will need to have some sort of upgrade path, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah if we if tomorrow COA allows for both supplying and, and borrowing or lending, uh, InReach mm -hmm. will have to be upgraded into that new like world, right? Yeah, there should be a way to migrate yeah, requests yeah, yeah. For sure. from one backend to the other. Yeah. So the first thing is uh, how how we define a lending side request, and, and next we need to specify uh, possibly uh, a core status graph for lending request. I guess that's the two pieces that we need to talk about. I agree. Yep. And then your refactoring work will make to make it easier. So we need to talk about splitting work, right? Yes, but I also think we need to talk about what work exactly needs to be done. Um, I think at this point, the, 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 the spec, if there is one, is a bit up in the air, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I sort of shared this uh, picture I made on paint um just sort of illustrate where where exactly my thoughts are around this in in terms of trying to 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 get some um reactions uh, about it right uh if this makes sense or not um but again this is very early stage thinking right um yeah. so again i i will try to put together something um about the inreach workflow and maybe we can have the how do hypernova is a company mm -hmm. uh maybe we can have them compare this status graph with the 
with the one that Enrich uses. Maybe we can find a common ground. Sounds like a plan. Yep. Yep. Okay. There is an action for me. Wonderful. Not wonderful that you've got an action, but wonderful that this is the start of <laughs> yeah. a plan. Uh, uh, yeah. Me, me, and Martin, we had uh, a call with uh, with Oli, uh, the main contributor here for this repository. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, over a year ago now. I think, wasn't it, Martin? Yeah, yeah, it was. So uh, at the time, Oli was very active on you know on this repository. I I don't know the context around that anymore. If if he's active here or not. Um, so there's that. Do you know Oli? He worked earlier, Oli Anki. Is he still around? No, uh, it worries, but it, I think we will pick up uh, everything. Right. Okay, is there anything further to be discussed today? I'm not seeing any. Uh, Thomas, you're about to talk. Um... Yeah, I, I wanted to say that my feeling is we should have a separate status graph and a separate class for lending. Uh, like it should be a separate backend. Now that a, a plugin can implement uh, its own backend, uh, maybe we can we can implement it like that. I agree. Like 100%. a new class for, lend, for lending. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. I I agree with that. Yeah. Let's uh, let's keep in touch. I guess and. Um... And yeah. see and see what what we can come up with in the next what what was it Andrew six months? I I would like to, yeah from the our customer perspective I think um that's the that's the time horizon we would really like to see their next upgrade is likely to be May next year so May June next year so um uh, and we we would we would look to backport if they weren't going to a version that had this finally in um okay but um yeah that's kind of for us where we would love to see this moving a long way forward yeah i like that cool good anyone else awesome. in the room Uh, I wanted to add that uh, there is an inReach version three uh, API that uh, we've been looking for sponsors uh, to develop. It might be a good fit for for this. It's a it's the same thing with slight differences. George Williams just stuck his hand up. I'm waving at uh, Andre's pictures. Oh, I, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought he was putting his hand in his pocket and grabbing cash out. <laughs> no, it's not a cocktail. Right. Great. We've got an edifying recording of this Zoom session as well, which is, you know, very edifying um, for bits where I'm not scratching around for people to say things. Uh, <laughs> Good, I think no no need to prolong. You all happy? Yeah, Pedro, Thomas? Very happy. Thank you. Right. Thank right. you. Okay, well, yeah. thank you very much for those that have joined us. And Pedro and um, Elena for joining as well. Um, and uh, some of us are flying home tonight, which is very sad. <laughs> And others flying home again in the weekend over the weekend. Um, but uh, just for you who are not here, 
Uh, we've missed you being here in person, and uh, we're, uh, we've had such a fabulous time here. Eric is in the room, and uh, I'm seeing you. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I'm not leaving. My last opportunity to thank Eric very publicly and all of the In Libro team for such an amazing, amazing Koha Con. Uh, so uh, a big round of applause for them, I think. Great, thank you very much. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Safe flight, everyone.